Hey guys, what's up? John here from FlyAteMikeAlpha.com and today we're going to be talking about the worst kind of bison you could possibly get in your airplane, super cooled large droplets. So what supercooled large droplets really are is just water that's well below freezing, well below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and hasn't frozen yet. Turns out water can exist in its liquid state really, really, really cold. So when water's very pure, like it exists in the atmosphere, and there's not a lot of impurities mixed into it, you could potentially get water as cold as minus 55 degrees Fahrenheit before it absolutely has to freeze. The trouble with that is, if the water is already minus 10 or even just 10 or 15 degrees Fahrenheit, and you touch it or give any impurities to it, it will instantly freeze. For example, when we look at this video here, we can see that holding this bottle of water that was in my truck overnight in about 5 degrees Fahrenheit weather, as soon as I went ahead and banged it on the side of the truck, it instantly started to freeze. It just need that little bit of agitation, like your wing or your windshield flying through the air and hitting those water droplets, to instantly freeze it. Now, it's a solid block of ice. You can see here pouring it out that if you're flying through this as rain or some sort of freezing rain or through these super cooled large droplets, it would instantly freeze to your wing and your windshield. It would be a really bad day for you because you'd be picking up ice really, really quickly. Now, if you think that's not possible and water will totally freeze when it hits 32 degrees Fahrenheit, well, some really smart guys like these guys at NASA in this super cold chamber actually test this out and they come up with these numbers. So what we have found here is that water will exist well below freezing and the moment it touches an airplane will instantly freeze and build up ice at an astonishing rate, way faster than de-ice equipment can actually get rid of it. Now let's go ahead and get technical here for a second. Now we know our 172s, Piper Cherokees, and most of our GA airplanes are not certified for flight into known icing conditions. But airplanes that are certified to go into flight into known icing conditions that have more than just pitot heat, like maybe boots or a heated wing, well, they've been certified to fly into water droplets about the size of 15 to 50 microns. So that's what they're expecting to fly into in things like stratus type clouds or cumulus clouds with droplets that could freeze to the airplane. Supercooled large droplets can be up to 100 times larger, so up to 5,000 microns. Now, 50 microns is a smaller than a millimeter. However, 5,000 microns, so 100 times larger than your normal water droplet, how big these supercooled large droplets can get, that can be almost a quarter inch. So just under a quarter inch, you could be flying into water droplets that will instantly freeze and build up ice very, very quickly because you're flying very fast through that ice. Now comes the big question, how do you avoid this? Well, of course, go to aviationweather.gov, go to forecast, icing, forecast icing, and look at the icing forecast. You'll see SLD threats. So not only is there a threat for icing in these areas, where you don't want to be flying an airplane that's not certified for flight into known icing conditions, but also in these specific areas, you really want to reconsider going flying because super cold large droplets may exist in these areas there is a threat for that where you could pick up ice very rapidly and even an airliner or something very sophisticated may not be able to successfully shed that ice quickly enough to stay flying. Now, does that mean that we can't go flying anywhere in the United States today all in these areas? No, not at all, because we're actually looking at the maximum icing severity from 1,000 feet to flight level 300 to 30,000 feet. So if I'm going to go ahead and fly at, say, 7,000 feet, well, not a problem. Looks like down here, that's not really an issue. No problem flying around Florida. And around here, well, 7,000 feet won't work. We'll hit the side of a mountain. That's terrain there. And then we have the and then we have the possibility of trace ice, light, moderate, and heavy icing. So when you're using this map, just make sure you're selecting the right things here, probability of icing. And always make sure you're looking at the SLD, the possibility of super cooled large droplets. And then, of course, select the flight levels that you plan to fly at to get a nice, accurate forecast for you. Thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions at all, go ahead and leave them in the comments below or in the forums on flyatmikealpha.com in the student pilot section. This video is part of our larger free online ground school for private pilots and also part of our instrument pilot ground school online at flyatmikealpha.com. Be sure to check out some of the courses, sign up for the updates, and as always, guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly 8 We will see you all next time. <laughs>